George Elliott Clark is we trace the room at AC on Montreal Encore. Um, I'm talking about history uh, and map or trap. My title allows an antithesis. History can be a map, a series of triumphs or defeats, victories or crises that structure the consciousness of an individual or a people. It may even have a teleological drive from Eden to Zion or from Bartolome de las Casas, the proponent of the transatlantic slave trade, to US President Barack Obama, who may be viewed as a messiah figure redeeming the history of African servitude in the new world. How one maps a history determines one's sense of progress or regress, deliverance or damnation. Yet history can also act as a trap, a quagmire, so that one lives as a zombie, repeating the same actions with the same consequences. This notion is indebted partly to Marxism, the idea that the oppressed are stuck in history and only revolution may deliver or liberate them. The most intransigent disputes the Middle East, or for that matter, the plight of First Nations in Canada, show signs of folks being entrapped in history with no map out. I'm thinking much of history as I write my epic poem, Canticles, which deals with the image of the Negro in Western civilization as well as the transatlantic slave trade. Pound says, the epic is a poem containing history. In my work, perhaps, history is a trap of oppression against which various actors compose a map. Three such actors are Nat Turner, leader of slave revolt in Virginia in 1831, and also Hannibal, who came close to conquering Rome in 218 to 201 BCE. Also, St. Augustine of Hippo, authoring his doctrine of just war in 1470. So uh, these are dramatic monologues, exploring states of consciousness, states of mind. Uh, Nat Turner. At the dusk of daybreak, the Atlantic slaps rocks till they cry and sob awake, and the squawks made by some of those slaps as the rocks react is like the slap of gulls treading water or touching beach to grab a morsel of flesh to break open shelled flesh. And here is the meaning of daybreak to be slapped awake. A breakage always shock and slap of it like a whip of surf breaking against rock. The whip of bullcock smacking and breaking against skin, leaving a bloody wake. So even an old black woman must squawk, moan, piss herself, the break of air snapping as she hollers, a whip breaking blood, making blood cross her back. So her screams surf air in the wake, squawking, the whip breaking against my mama's back, leaking blood in the wake. What black flesh is for, the breaking of soil, the smashing of rock, and the whip surfs the air before it breaks bad against my mama's back. My child's back too, black back too. So kitties squawk as their blood surfs upon the air, as the whip breaks skin so sharp as a knife. And it is blood in my eyes, and it is blood in my piss, and it is blood in my lungs, and it is blood in my sperm, and the water that reels from my eyes, and the water that peels from my skin, all is blood, a steady pulse and punctuation of it, and a plantation of blood. The white cotton goes crimson, sodden with it. The crop of thorns springs up from blood. The Atlantic is a red sea. Virginia's beaches are a red tide. The apple brandy is blood mixed. The red letter words in sermons bleed. I look at the moon, there is blood. I look at corn, there is blood. There's a message in all this bleeding. I hear a word spoken in blood to answer the snapping whip. I must use an unbreaking sword. Hannibal. We will bring proud Rome to book and end her bullying and hectoring and prove to her the pain of tussling with Moorish eminence. We find her soldiers be so much butchered meat. Unbroken, unbridled, we swarm the Alps to have to brave winter worries, the snowy subterfuges that plunge us into crevasse or abyss. Elephants tumbling down as out of place as turtles in a desert, their trunks snaking out to snort air but never snatch a hold. History is hell. We meet our fleeing foe. A hammer blow crushes one skull, so blood is free mixing with falling snow. An ax blow pitches another head free of its nick. The blonde hair splashes the snow as incidental amber. Our triumphs drench our heads in wine but drown the Roman skulls in blood. 
Victors know a hitty drenching. The ruddy body snow blanched seem a paste of grapes or strawberries and appetizing sludge. So thorough is our murdering, it is massacre. And we see how blood displaces dew at dawn, how green grass gleams coppery, how blood cascades smooth as a mountain stream. Triumph after triumph, we thunder toward Rome. Abundant horses, big ass elephants, ponderous, all thundering down the Alps toward Rome. The tender earth accepting our cleaving steps as we rush downward like bee sting stampeded bulls to fall upon the Romans as presumptuous as gods. We strike them as intolerable waves, loathsome torrents, as vultures raucous wings slap the air and the headstrong Romans flounder as if drowning like lemmings as we thrust them over cliffs or thrust our spears through them. St. Augustine, uh, justifying war. Policy requires a gathering of palookas, a storehouse of heroes cemented by blood and belief, skilled at battle, axe, and sail, all manner of hand-to-hand -hand bloodshed, to roam the Rhone and rhyme upon the Rhine, chop up the sea into waves, and God's enemies into Sashi, the tumult of blood, make it pamper putrefaction, the overhanging arrows whistling instantly downward to bluntly thud heathens' hearts or heads, so that they suddenly find themselves alive, burning in the sulfur stench of hell, guarantees us our justice. If it comes to pass that an accursed cur, some horse son pup finds their soldier's spear stuck in his chest, so his jaws strain to grab at air any morsel of oxygen, but only blood bubbles from his mouth, so be it. It is his damnation for having charged at our fluttering spears, the uplifted wave crest, brazen flood of the tips, descending to perforate the flesh of horses and smash the opposing forces, questionable men, to pieces skewered. I cannot imagine any philosophy that would spare God's opponents relentless pain. The city of God offers antichrist hordes, devouring steel and fire, hungry faggots, torches, famished arrows, bristling spears, blitzing the sky. So our suburbs are ranks of noxious corpses, raw meat, maggoty, for jagged milk dogs, interminable black smoke hovers and chokes the last breaths of the dying who witness convolutions of black smoldering clouds. We see our foes destroyed to the bone and next to the bone burned to ash. This is is justice that venal foreigners outside baptism discover in the flesh beautiful wounds beautified by insects even with the hooked fish eyes rotting mercy 